Hey, welcome back everybody. It is Dr. Stephen Herod again, coming to you from the Technical University of Denmark. And uh, today, I'd like to demonstrate for you the buffers feature in Q QGIS. Excuse me, a little bit of Danish slipping into my voice there. And the also the count points in polygon function. And the purpose of this is going to be primarily for my purpose is something called uh, station nearness analysis or in Danish uplands analysis. And so let's get started before I say too much more. Let's get the software going. We're going to be running in uh, QGIS 3.10.3 right now, the long-term release. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Ah, Karuna. I'm not sure, that's probably wrong. But here it is loading up. And uh, quickly before I get really started here, I am assuming you need to have a little bit of skills to use this before we get started. I, I, I expect that you can do some basic map manipulation here. And I assume that you can do some uh, layer manipulation and that you know how to do some layer filtering. So those are some skills I expect you to have. So let's get started. Let's get a map on here. I'm going to use uh, Google Map. That I have already. Oh, and the XYZ tiles. I'm assuming that you know what this is. I'm not going to take the time to demonstrate XYZ tiles, uh, explain to you how that works. We're going to just use it. And so let's get into a little piece of this map that is dear to my heart. Let's get in here to Copenhagen. Hometown here. Here we go. So we're looking at Copenhagen and it just so happens to be it just so happens to be that I have a data file that tells me where all the public transport stops in the North Shalin area are. And so, again, I'm not going to explain to you exactly how this works. That's for another lesson. So if I'm going too fast or you don't know what this is, I apologize, but we're just going to have to do this. So I have my data file and I have actually already used this file before so all the settings are already configured correctly and it has the coordinates of all of the public transport stops and the names of those public transport stops. So let's add that and it's going to ask me to confirm the translation of the, of the coordinate system and I'm going to accept that as good. And here we go. Here are all the public transport stops in uh, North Shayland, Copenhagen region. And now let's do something fun. So I would like to find out which of these stops are convenient if one would like to visit a grocery store, and in particular, a chain of grocery store that we call Netto here in Denmark. So let's get all the Netto grocery stores on this map, and I'll show you how we do that. Again, uh, here's another lesson that you might like to, uh, to watch. I have another video. I have another video called Using the Quick OSM Plugin for QGIS, and I strongly recommend that you see that video because I'm gonna go quickly here. I'm not going to explain how this is working. I'm just going to go and do it. I already know what the settings are and uh, if you'd like to know more about how this is working, please see my other video. But here we go. Let's run this. And we're done. And these other colored dots are the Netto grocery stores in North Shayland. And sometimes there's a lot of them and sometimes there are not so many. But now I'm interested in knowing which of these are close to a public transport stop? Which of these are close to a bus station? Which of these are close to a bus stop? Which of these are close to a train station? To a metro station? All of these things. So we're going to use a tool called the buffer tool. It's up here in the geoprocessing tools area and we're going to select buffer. 
and we're going to make a buffer not around the stores but around the transit stops and I'm going to select 600 meters. Now why 600 meters? Well for those of you who are not in transport as a field of interest it happens to be that 600 meters is considered kind of the magic distance that most people are willing to walk in Europe anyway don't know about you guys from North America but in Europe anyway 600 meters is considered the the distance that people would be willing to walk from a public transport station so we want to I'm going to run this and it's done and I need to move things around a little bit because you can't quite see what I've done here the buffer is now covering the information so let's drop this down in the list here and now the buffers are still a little bit hidden let's uh, why don't we why don't we just turn this one off for the moment let's turn that off so these are the buffers and let's zoom in a little closer to see what we're talking about here and now you see things in a little different scale and in fact let me make the buffers transparent let's make these a little transparent so that you can kind of see what's underneath there so these are the 600 meter circles around all of the bus stops and train stops in the transport system and then here's a netto there's a netto and there's another netto we can get in a little closer here and we're still maybe a little too much color I'll drop it even more even lighter there we go so you can see the street map underneath and you can see the nettos and you can see which ones are within 600 meters of the transport stop so let's back back let's zoom back out a little bit here back out a little bit further back out again and so we now see this graphically but now the question is which of these transport stops are close to a netto so let's figure that out so we can use a tool called the count points tool vector analysis count points count points in a polygon so a polygons I'm sure many of you know this all of those round circles those buffer circles those are polygons but the netto locations are are points they are point data and the buffers are polygons they are shapes so let's go into here and I want to figure out from the buffers these are the buffers that I created I want to find out which of them contain a netto point and I want to count the number of stores so let's say count stores and I'm going to save the count in this other layer and that's it let's run this all right that took a little time but come on yes I know thank you yes we're done there we go so what did did what did this do so it what it has done is it has duplicated it made a copy of this layer it made a copy of it called count so this layer here is the same as this layer but it has a little more information so I can turn this one off because they're essentially the same layer now I'm gonna turn that one off except this one doesn't have my transparency anymore I need to go back if I want that again but now if you look at the data inside this one all the way over here we now have a new column what oh, can't quite see it let me see if I can get that out there we go there we go uh, it now has well, oops, still got to go further over way over here now we have a count we have a column in the data that says oh how many stores are there in that well that's a lot look at that that must be down in the city I'm sure that's down in central Copenhagen five netto stores in 600 meters but that that can happen in in the city that could happen so now I know how many they are so now I would like to only see the transport stops that have a netto nearby so let's filter this filter 
and count stores greater than zero. And let's run that. And there you go. And now we have only the transport stops. And if I turn the netto off, only the transport stops that have a uh, netto nearby and which ones they are. And we can zoom in here a little closer, say for example, up here and see those stops. I can turn the original stop coordinate point back on and we could work on this a little further if we wanted to improve the cosmetics a little. And I could do some other things to try and uh, clean this up a little better. I could probably join these data sets a little bit more because the count, the count table has my original, it does have my original data in it. So I could link this to the stop coordinate data with a join and then filter this out and then display only the gray spots that represent the stops that actually have the nettos in them. But I think that's all for now. I appreciate your time. We, of course, another thing we could do, and I'm not going to spend time doing it, is um, we could have gone the other way around. We could have started with the nettos and made a buffer around the nettos and then found out how many transit stops there were inside the netto buffer and then filtered it that way. That's another way we could have done this. Uh, and you would get a similar result, maybe with a slightly different data set. But uh, I think I've gone through the steps. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope this is useful for you. Thank you so much. Oh, and don't forget to save your results. Before you close this out, before you quit, see all these little symbols here. None of these results have been saved to disk. They're all in memory. So work safely, save your work. And thank you so much. And we'll talk to you again. This is Stephen Herod at the Technical University of Denmark.